This is Matt Cohen for Matt Cohen Photo Workshops. For more information about joining me at one of my workshops, you can go to mattcohenphoto.com slash workshops. And you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Matt Cohen Photo. Anyway, this is just a little video to demonstrate part of my process. These pictures are all from the calf roping at the last night of the St. Paul Rodeo this year. So St. Paul is a really cool rodeo for a lot of reasons, but mostly because of the light. The problem is that the light is good for about the first half of the evening performances, and then once the sun sets, the arena lights are not very good unless you're really close to them and the action is happening really close to them. Uh, for the calf roping, usually it's happening right as the sun is setting, and it makes shooting it a little bit challenging because there's not very much light coming from the side um, opposite the sun, and if you're shooting with the sun, then you're going to be pretty far away from it, and your shadow is going to be in the picture. So I shoot it like this ordinarily. Um, there's nothing great about these pictures, but there's nothing wrong with them either. For this, as you can see, I'm shooting with the 200 f2 that gives you the nice blurred out background even you know even if you look at the judge like if you were shooting this at you know with a 70 to 200 at 28 or something he would be completely in focus there'd be no separation at all but and then you look back to the back where the stands are it's just mush so this is this is fine like if i had shot the whole set like this it would have been fine boring and at this point in the season kind of overkill since i have multiple pictures of all of these guys so part of what got me thinking about this was, okay, I have all these pictures. I don't need more of them. So I started out just shooting it straight up. Just, you know, I just want some clean background action pictures, um, both swinging the rope and jumping off. So you can take a look as I'll scroll through here. Um, so as you can see, like in, in this picture, he's the grandstand is blocking most of the sunlight the sun is um i guess at about 10 o'clock if you're looking at this picture as a clock it's about 10 o'clock so most of the grandstands is blocking the sunlight um, you can see where it's coming through up in the top left but you can also see that it's not really landing anywhere in the frame so but once the calf runs a little bit and he's further down the arena you can see this is where the sun was being blocked but now that he's out here it opens up the arena so this is the edge of the grandstand and this is just open sky right so again um you know the the meter reading is basically the same and so the aperture and shutter speed are going to be the same because um the light that i'm shooting isn't affected by any of this so i don't care about this light for this picture right all i'm trying to do is use the remaining uh, sunlight that's coming this way like bouncing off of things and the arena lights themselves to light up this side of his face so this is the only thing that I'm concerned about being properly exposed and it is because it's it's really all the same as here like the, nothing changed from here to here as far as this side goes so you know that's fine like you can you can make all these pictures you know they're fine nothing wrong with them not going in my portfolio not going in a you know, best of or anything like that, but they're usable pictures. Um, also, these are all I haven't. These are all untouched, so um, keep that in mind when you're looking at them. But anyway, so this is all the same exposure. It it varies a little bit just because of reflected light and where he is versus where the arena lights are. But again, just straight up. So this is where I started to notice. I guess after this run was over and I looked at um, at this picture I could see the light up here and I said okay well that's starting to get cool the sun's starting to go down it's starting to go through more of the atmosphere so the color is going to get richer and darker as it goes so again you know there's nothing wrong with this picture you know slightly straightened and then you know just a little bit of a crop and this is this picture is fine there's nothing wrong with it but you know it, it anybody can do this like it's really not that difficult to do this like you just learn about calf roping and figure out where to stand you're going to eventually get this kind of picture not that big of a deal but 
where the value add comes in, where the experience comes in is when you are doing this to still be able to notice things in the background like this light and say, oh, I'd really like to get some of that light in these pictures. So this was my first adjustment there, you know, between when this run ended and when this run started, I guess there were probably a minute or something like that. And so I, you know, I was looking at the pictures like, okay, what do I want to do differently? Do I want to move? Whatever. So I noticed this and I said, okay, I'm shooting this straight up for action. Um, and I am at 2,500 ISO and, uh, one, 1,250th of a second. So that gets you this exposure, but it's also way, way overexposed. I'm letting in way too much light, um, time wise and sensitivity wise. So I just made a guess, right? I didn't have really any time in between when I figured out what I wanted to do and when I did it. So I just guessed. So I dropped the ISO down a little bit and I cranked the shutter speed up a few stops and this is what I got. So this is better. Um, but this is still, you know, when you're talking about a sunset, like this isn't really the color that you want. Like if, if I had gotten it right, just underexposed it more than you see okay this is really what we're talking about right that's okay then the colors really pop but if you just look at it where it was shot that's not really all that interesting you'd have to know okay that's what a sunset looks like when it's overexposed so but even if let's say i had gotten the exposure right on this one and i was doing a silhouette because that's really all you're going to be able to do here look at how the background swallows up the horse and most of the rider like you really can't tell what's going on here like if you were just scrolling through you're like, I have no idea what's going on and then if you cropped it to where it's tight there's just not enough separation between the horse and the cowboy in the background it's just too muddy right like it's pretty and if you really know something about rodeo cowboys or whatever you can make out all the things going on here um, you know and you can I don't know, you can mess around with the shadows and you have something like this that looks atrocious. But if you really wanted to save it, you would have to do something like that. Um, that's not what kind of picture I want. I don't need this picture, so I don't need to do any kind of crazy heroic things to it. What I needed to do is recognize that where I was standing was not ideal for the picture that I was making. Standing here is fine if what you're trying for is you know just a regular action picture like if i had gone back to the regular settings and did this then this picture is going to look like all of these pictures would be fine right nothing spectacular but where the picture that i'm trying to make with the sun set in the background is not going to look good from this angle because way too much of this is getting swallowed up by the background i need this set off on the sunset right so i need to do some i don't know geometry or whatever to figure out this is what I wanted, but I wanted the horse and the rider to be here. So where can I move that's going to get all of those things aligned? And it's a total crapshoot because you never know which way the calf is going to go. You never know if the horse is going to be very close behind it or, you know, you just have no idea. Like there's, this could be 15 or 20 yards over this way. It could be, it could run me over. Like you just have no idea. So you have to give yourself the best guess. Where are they catching down the pen? where is the space that I'm trying to put it and then stand so that whatever you're shooting is set off against whatever you want to be the background. That's just composition when you can't zoom composition where you have to move around to line things up. So now I know I'm on to something like this is what I, this is what I'm looking for. It's not right, but I'm getting closer. This is where a couple little final adjustments can get you into the zone. When you're here, you may not even notice it, but once you get here, you're like, okay, now it's starting to come together. This is still a little bit overexposed, or maybe it's still just a little bit too early. And where I'm standing is going to get him against the background of the stands in these trees instead of the open sky, which is where I want him. So I made another adjustment. Um, well, not here, because this is the same run, but you can see he's he's kind of breaking in. So where I was before was getting him here, you know, when I wanted him and this was the background here, I'm getting more of that clean sky background. So this is when I noticed, okay, this is, this is the zone, right? Anything good that's going to happen is going to happen in here. Nothing else matters, right? There's not, you know, any kind of stray beams of light that are going to light him up over here. And, this pole is here and nothing gets better. There's scoreboard and more stands over here. So really 
this is what I'm shooting for. Like I could sell out. I could, you know, the only pictures I'm going to get are going to be in here because that's the only pictures that are going to look good given the setup that I have. So again, this is the same rod. This is again, another adjustment I made. What did I do? So I, this is still too light for me. So I took the ISO from 1600 in this one to 800. So again, now you're bringing in some more of this richness, um, this orange here, and then, you know, letting this go to purple. So this again, much closer. And so this is, this would probably, I don't know if I changed it after this, we'll see in a minute, but as the sun sets, this is probably where you want to be because the next five minutes or something like that are going to be relatively the same and it's going to be playing in your hand. It's going to be getting darker so the colors are going to be popping more. So this was just in between runs. What is it really going to look like? I dropped it again. I guess I decided when I saw this, okay, still too much light getting in for what time of day it is. Um, so here you can see this is what I was looking for. So this is again dropping it. So I saw this run, I was at 1600, too bright, test, too bright. Okay, one last adjustment before the run goes and you're at 14 and this is what you have. But again, this was too early because nothing that happened here, this was all gonna be dark and you can't have a silhouette if the subject is the same exposure as the background. So nothing was gonna happen. Like literally, something, you know, the guy could have jumped off his horse and started doing cartwheels and I wouldn't have been ready for it at all, right? But that's fine because that's not what I was expecting. It's not the picture that I was trying to make. The picture I was trying to make is a silhouette against here. So I'm getting closer and then he's coming into it. And so now I know, okay, this is exactly what I'm looking for. I got a little bit unlucky because the horse's head gets swallowed up by this house here. But, you know, if you were just doing a picture of the cowboy and it was just here, like, that's fine. Like, you're, you know, you could make something out of this if you had to. Not perfect, but you could make something out of it. But you notice as he's going down, you know, that's where the window closes because you have this pole here and that's just going to ruin anything. And the reason these, you know, this house and this pole, because it's silhouettes, you're not lighting up this side. You're not that the sunset isn't just like, oh, that's nice to have. That's the whole picture, right? The, just the sunset and whatever figure you get here. So the detail of the silhouette, how the silhouette looks really matters. So having this pole and this house ruin it you know, you just have to accept that and move on. Like, it's just not, this picture is not good enough. You can't have a sunset silhouette broken up by this kind of stuff. It's just, it just looks bad. So again, you're kind of coming back to it, but, but now the angle is worse. So shooting this way, he, you know, he was going to have a little bit more height over what's going on in the background. As, as you're coming further down, he's you know, the relative size of the thing that's close to me is getting further away, but the background isn't getting further away. So you're just kind of, you're losing the definition of the background. Could you make something out of this? Yeah, you can. Like there's literally nothing wrong with this at all. You could probably do a little bit of more work to it to make this color pop a little bit and maybe make this more of a silhouette and this would be fine. I don't like it because you have the tree in the background, even though it's out of focus, it's still taking away from the silhouette. Like this is not what a horse's head like looks like. This is what the horse's head looks like. So when you have this, it's just distracting. And then you have um, this from the fence also distracting. But, you know, if this is all I got, would I be happy with this? Um, you know, I would show people this. I wouldn't, this wouldn't be like, oh, look at this amazing picture. It'd be like, yeah, I got a, you know, a cool picture with a, with the sunset. I wouldn't be overjoyed with it, but I can tell again, you know, just three or four ropers after I noticed what I wanted to do, this is, I'll take it. It's fine. So this is the next rider. And this, again, you know, you can see it's getting darker. So this is even popping a little bit more. I left the settings where they were and just kind of let the light come to me. But again, the house, you know, if that house wasn't there and this was just the background, you know, this would be, uh, you know, I would really be into this picture a lot. But the problem is that you can see how the house breaks up the silhouette and it's just not as good as it would be if it wasn't there. You just have to accept that. Like a picture that's almost great is oftentimes really bad. You just have to let it go. Um, so again, you know, the, the light is coming, it's getting darker, even like shot to shot, ride to ride, it's getting darker. You can see that there. Um, but again, I'm just getting a little bit unlucky. Like the, they're not, I'm, I, I wasn't able to get close enough to get the up angle 
Right. So ideally, right, if you, if you were doing this for an ad and you had control over everything and there didn't have to be a calf, there could just be a guy riding his horse right by you. You would want to be like down in the dirt with a wide angle lens shooting straight up so that the background was the whole sky. Like that would have been amazing. Right. Not even a wide angle. Like you could have done this at like 50 millimeters or something like that and just had the open sky and the tree and the the still in silhouette. And that would have been amazing. But safety and not screwing up somebody's run or something you have to be further back so really i'm looking at not just this whole thing i'm looking at this i'm looking at can this guy make the angle that i want him to make and a lot of this it was just coming where the horse's head was here nothing you can do about that like this is just a bonus like you're in bonus time here you're near the end of the rodeo you have all the pictures you want and oh yeah this is amazing this is going to be better than if i just shot it straight up so you can take a risk for a few runs here and there again you just unlucky just wh wherever the horse and what the rider is doing there's it's not enough of a silhouette to make that a good picture so here is where you're really starting to get it right the this is almost as dark purple as it can be red orange yellow you know some greens in here like this is really nice and then just you can see how when the horse was closer like so you can see the horse was going away from me on this one and towards me on this one just by the size like i didn't change it's still 200 you know i didn't move it's just for going away from me going towards me so this is probably the best version out of all of this. You can see you do get that little bit of separation in here. That's important. You know, if you're doing a silhouette, the outline of the silhouette is important. And if something breaks that up, it's not as cool. So you do have that here a little bit. And you have the end of the rope here and you have the cowboy. You can see the pig and string in his mouth and the mane going here. Um, you know, what will I do differently next year? I will shoot with a 300 next year because this is still too loose right what i would really want is for most of the picture to be something like this because this is really all that matters all the rest of it doesn't matter but you know will i sit around and waste a whole set of calf roping to get a picture like this every single day <laughs> you know 15 guys 12 or 15 guys went or something like that there wasn't going to be a national championship decided or you know whatever like it, it, it's just calf roping it's just i have a million pictures of, of this so what i want what do i want to do is something like this something that's special something that nobody else who was there saw something that even if they did see it they probably couldn't have get it this is what separates good work from bad work is being able to recognize the situation and capitalize on it so yeah this is probably the best version of it you can see why this one is you know maybe not quite as good because you don't have the separation there and he is kind of swallowed up by the tree here but by this one he's cleared it and the horse has cleared this. So this is really the perfect version of this. Um, still fine. Still could use this picture. But really, you know, what you're looking for is that. So this is the next run. And initially, I thought this was probably the best picture. Um, I like how his rope is out like this. And you can see very clearly the pig and string defined. And you can see his silhouette. Um, his, the You know, the profile and silhouette. And then the cowboy hat. So... You know, you look at this as it would be cropped, you know, as I would probably crop it. And this is good, too. But again, would this picture be better if there was the separation between the horse's face and the building? Like, was I, I don't know, a little bit, you know, if I had been lower and closer, could I have gotten that separation? Yeah, I could. But maybe the rope wouldn't have looked cool. Like, this this picture is cool because of how far the rope is stretched out and the fact that there is the separation here. So that's cool. Again, initially I thought this was the best version of it, but because the horse's face is swallowed up like this and the this, I don't know, not quite as good as this one. So between these two, you can see, you know, it's a true silhouette. You can, you know, you have the outlines of all of that. So it's just better. This is fine. It's just not as good. And then this one, you know, again, the horse swallowed up. The rope isn't in as great. A situation you can tell it's really starting to get dark here but there was still you know some time if i if something had come a little bit closer to me it would have still been cool um you know again you can see what happens there's trees fence you're just going to lose everything that's going on here it's not going to work out um this one yeah this is okay again you know kind of similar 
to this one. It's all fine, but no separation and the pole. And then these, you can, you know, you can cut something out of this if you wanted to, but then it's, you know, really just about the cowboy. And then you have the number on there, which is not quite um, what you would want. But, you know, again, there's a lot of different things you could do. I would rather have been shooting much tighter than this. Like I said, with a 300 or maybe even a 400, I probably could have gotten lower than this and kind of got that nice up angle and maybe made a little bit more out of these. But for figuring it out on the fly and getting, um, you know, these two pictures back to back, um, you know, that's a good day's work, even if I didn't get anything else from that day. So, um, anyway, I hope that that was enlightening to you. Um, the lesson here isn't, um, you know, go shoot somewhere with a sunset and have a 200 F2 with you. It's pay attention to what's going on around you because you might get something that, is a background element that you want to make a foreground element like the sunset here the sunset is more important than whatever the cowboys are doing so when you're out shooting pay attention to everything that's going on around you and figure out if there is something cool how can you incorporate that into your pictures so hopefully that helps um, again you can sign up for my workshops at mattcohenphoto.com workshops you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Matt Cohen Photo, and you can get at me with any questions in those places. Thanks for watching.